message Gabby Giffords hopes to send by using flowers to show the scope of gun violence in the United States. Plus, how a boom in electric car companies could impact the Valley's economy. And on Break It Down, a local expert weighs in on the governor's easing of COVID mitigation efforts. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Delaney White. And I'm Stona Meadows. Thank you for joining us. Tens of thousands of flowers blanket the National Mall in Washington this week. Not a sign of spring, but a sign of mourning. It's a memorial for the thousands killed in the U.S. each year by guns. And it was arranged by former Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Gifford's gun reform group, as Jake Holter explains from our Washington Bureau. Each silk white rose represents one of the 40,000 Americans killed on average from gun violence each year. A number advocates say is far too high. We are at a crossroads. We can let the shooting continue or we can act. We can protect our families, our future. We can vote. We can be on the right side of history. Former Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords has been an advocate for gun reform since a 2011 assassination attempt that left six dead and 13 wounded, including her. There is some hope for action. The House last month passed H.R. 8, a bill calling for stricter background checks on gun buyers. And President Joe Biden last week issued executive orders to curb gun violence in response to a string of recent mass shootings. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the Senate needs to stop stalling on H.R. 8. It's time for this long overdue for the Senate to act for the people, for the children. So thank you, Gabby, for bringing us together in front of this, what would be considered a beautiful display, except for the heartbreakingness. Even if Congress acts, new laws could hit a dead end in Arizona, where Governor Doug Ducey last week signed the Second Amendment Freedom Act. The law prohibits state and local officials from enforcing federal gun restrictions inconsistent with state law. But as she visited the memorial today in Washington, Shannon Watts, the founder of Moms Demand Action, pressed Congress to pass common sense gun laws. And I just think memorials like this remind us of the toll of gun violence in this country every day. Over 100 Americans are shot and killed, hundreds more are wounded. And it is time for a long to stop. The gun violence memorial will remain on display on the National Mall until Friday. In Washington, Jay Coulter, Cronkite News. That congressional bill, the Bipartisan Background Checks Act of 2021, has been sitting in the Senate for just over a month now, but no action has been taken. A companion Senate bill has yet to get a hearing more than a month after it was introduced. For a look at five gun bills making their way through the Arizona legislature right now, head to our website, cronkitenews.azpbs.org. The city of Tucson has agreed to house asylum seekers in hotels while Customs and Border Protection officials finish building tent-like facilities. The mayor of Tucson, Regina Romero, says right now the city is paying local hotels to temporarily house 75 migrants who were traveling as families. But she's looking for federal assistance while the other facility is being built. It should be complete by the end of April or the beginning of next month. The administering of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine in Arizona and across the country is paused while the federal health authorities look into a possible link to rare blood clots. Executive Director of the Arizona State University Biodesign Institute, Joshua LaBear, says the cases of blood clots are a rare occurrence. The incidence, as you all know, is very, very low. It is roughly one in a million, a little bit less than one in a million. At a rate of one in a million, this is not something that could have been observed in a clinical trial. Experts say if you had the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, to call your doctor. If you have had a bad headache that won't go away, abdominal or leg pain, or increased shortness of breath. We're now learning mRNA COVID-19 vaccines like the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines will likely protect people against the virus for at least nine months, not six months like they previously thought. That's according to the director of the FDA Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research. The FDA also says it's possible the vaccines will require boosters. Yesterday, Moderna also announced its vaccine is 90% effective for at least six months. And Pfizer recently provided similar findings about its version. 2020 was a difficult year for many, but one Valley healthcare worker faced an obstacle larger than life while tackling nursing school during the pandemic. I spoke to Jessica Latuli about her difficult battle throughout the year of 2020 and the bright future she has to look forward to. So I was diagnosed um, with breast cancer December 30th, 2016. 
and I promised myself I would like go to nursing school right when I finished treatment so literally I just enrolled and got started right like just went head in. Jessica Latuli started school the year after her first diagnosis with breast cancer. The first time I feel like was more of a shock and it just like halted like our whole family it just like shook everybody and um, we really had to fight like the emotions we were having I would have meltdowns of crying in the shower not knowing what's to come. She was diagnosed with cancer a second time during her last six months of nursing school in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. The second time I was diagnosed uh, November 2020 um, I was just angry. <laughs> I felt really angry. I was in my last six months of nursing school, um, just ready to be a nurse, ready to take care of people. And um, when I found out that it came, the biopsy came back um, positive for cancer again, I was just so mad. <laughs> so I got over it the next day and just said, okay, what do we gotta do? Latuli worked hard to beat the cancer a second time while still in school. Over her break, she had the initial surgery to remove the cancer, but later found out she would need another to clear the edges of the cancer that might have been left behind. I needed a second surgery, which was my finals week. <laughs> so I had surgery to resect the rest of like whatever they left behind of the cancer cells. Um, and the next day I took my final of one of my hardest classes. While attending classes, she did five weeks of radiation, Monday through Friday. While in school, so every day at 2 p.m., I had to make sure I was there for radiation. But the hard work is worth it to Latuli, who hopes to help others and provide comfort in the same way nurses did to her. Latuli credits her success to her friends, teachers, doctors, nurses, and a stage four cancer survivor, who gave her powerful words of support during a difficult time. Thanks to her hard work and determination, she is in remission and will graduate from nursing school at the end of the month. So she told me she wakes up every day and she says, not today, cancer. So literally, it's just like I did that with that second treatment. It's like, not today, cancer. Like, this is my day. I'm going to make the best of it and, um, yeah, not let it hold me back. Lichuli plans to continue working in the intensive care unit after graduation. A big congratulations to her. Taking a look outside here in downtown Phoenix, it's another beautiful day in the 80s. Let's go to Faith Abercrombie for what we can expect in the forecast for the rest of the week. Faith? Yes, it is a beautiful hump day. We are at the midpoint of our work week. And as we go into the rest of the week, we should be seeing a little bit of clouds, but they'll be going away at the start of next week. And with these clouds, we won't have a still heat. We'll have some wind kind of hanging around that 10 mile hour per hour wind speeds. And for tomorrow, our average high temperatures in the valley is hanging out around 85 degrees. We're not too far off here in Phoenix with 83 degrees as our high tomorrow. Now tonight, it'll be pretty warm around 6 p.m., 83 degrees, no precipitation with these clouds, a little breezy, but nothing too crazy. And tomorrow and Friday, our eight day forecast, it'll be a little cloudy, hanging around those 80 degree temperatures. Saturday might be the perfect pool day, no clouds in the sky, and as we go into the rest of next week, we'll see a 90 degree temperature with 92 degrees on Tuesday, 89 on Wednesday and 86 on Thursday. For Cronkite Weather, I'm Faith Abercrombie. Arizona is seeing a spike in electric vehicle companies setting up routes within the state. But why did the companies choose Arizona and what does this mean for the state's technological economy? I took a deeper look at what's driving these companies here. We looked at over 60 sites in 13 different states. Um, for where we wanted to manufacture. We, we looked around, um, we decided, you know, Casa Grande had a lot to offer in the state of Arizona. You know, right, it's a, it's a good, good location for a supply chain. We can pull from, the, from all of North America here, it's pretty centralized. We're pretty close to headquarters. Mike Boyke, director of manufacturing at Lucid Motors and Electric Vehicle Company, says Lucid Motors chose Arizona for a reason. What having all of these technology and electric vehicle companies come to Arizona means is Arizona is poised for further growth and more jobs because of it. Um, technology companies really look for a technology and innovation ecosystem when they're looking to base their, their factories or their headquarters. Patrick Patak, Senior Vice President of Executive Initiatives for the Arizona Commerce Authority, explains Arizona welcomes innovation and technology and it continues to expand. I think we now have more than 10,000 technology companies here. So 
not only are we growing these jobs and these wages, um, but there's benefits across the economy. As these higher wage jobs come in, uh, they'll spend money in the service sector or the leisure sector, for example, and it brings benefits really to the entire state. And Boyke shares his prediction for the job market at Lucid Motors alone. Now, by the end of this year, we're going to be right around 1,500 jobs. When we look towards the future, there's phase two, phase three, phase four. You know, we anticipate we'll be over 3,000 people of uh, uh, jobs. You know, so it really then um, starts to bol really bolster the economy. Eric Anderson, executive director of Maricopa Association of Governments, says more individuals may be likely to purchase electric cars in the future. The price point on electric vehicles is coming down very quickly. And so there are estimates that in the next uh, two to three years, the uh, price of a, a electric vehicle versus a, a gasoline powered vehicle is going to be about the same. And once that starts to happen, uh, I think you're going to see a bigger shift to the electric vehicle market. Lucid Motors is working on a new model called the Lucid Air, and they're in phase two of expanding the Casa Grande location. Speaking of the future of cars and technology in Arizona, a new rideshare service has been launched to provide transportation between Phoenix and Tucson using Teslas. Scottsdale-based company Falcon Line says the cost of the trips will be anywhere from $1 to $300. You can book a one-way or round-trip ride, but all reservations must be made in advance. For frequent passion passengers, the company is offering a subscription to service for people who will be traveling between the two cities often. Hi, I'm Gareth Kwok, and after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. We'll share the story of one runner who's pushing through tragedy and winning races while doing it. So don't go away. This month in Passport, your on-demand library of the best of PBS. Everyone has secrets. Are you protecting someone? I have no choice. You do have a choice. You're looking at him. That's amazing. We could be standing on top of a T-Rex right now. <laughs> Women demanded new space and pushed the boundaries of what being a lady means. These and other shows are available with Passport. Become a member of this PBS station, sign in, and start streaming today. Cronkite News provides students at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism with the opportunity to gain real-world experience in the newsroom. At Cronkite News, our students produce professional content for audiences by taking on all roles, whether they be reporting, anchoring, producing, or studio production. Each department gives students first-hand professional newsroom experience. For more information, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Hey, I'm Rick Steves. You know, I don't go anywhere without my passport. And now, thanks to PBS Passport, you can travel with me and watch all 10 seasons of Rick Steves Europe and all my travel specials. This exclusive streaming service is just for our members. Not only can you see all my shows, but you can see thousands of hours of your favorite public television shows. Become a member today and get your passport. Welcome back. I'm Gareth Kwok with your Cronkite Sports Report. The Cardinals announced a big-time free agent signing. Former Steelers running back James Conner is heading from the Steel City to the Valley. Conner played college ball at the University of Pittsburgh, where his battle with Hodgkin's lymphoma became an inspirational story for many. He was thrilled to join the Cards in his first meeting with local media. I just felt right place, right time. Um, you know, opportunity to, to come here and uh, just contribute to something that's, that's, that I believe is, is on the rise and, and is going great. Just the opportunity to come learn from these veterans. The 26-year-old running back will be entering his fifth year in the NFL. The Cardinals hope that he, along with Chase Edmonds, will fill the void left by the departure of Kenyon Drake to the Las Vegas Raiders. And the Diamondbacks finally saw their scheduled opening day starter, Zach Gallen, take the hill. The 25-year-old ace had been sidelined with a hairline fracture in his right arm. He pitched four innings of one run ball, and although the team fell late to the Oakland A's, Gallon said he was focused on getting back into his rhythm. Still feeling through some things more so than anything, I think, than more than a, than a tentativeness. Um, yeah, it's, it's more just trying to feel it, um, get that feel back. But yeah, once the game started, 
I was like, all right, let's, let's get down to business. Boulder Creek track athlete Kaylee Whitson is breaking new personal records as she returns to the track for her final season. Cronkite News reporter Autumn Thompson catches up with the young track star. Kaylee Whitson is not just finishing her senior season of track, but she is finishing it fast. She recorded her personal best at the Ridge Invitational at 26.6 seconds. Hard work just pays off because that 200 that I ran was the second 200 I've ever run in my life. And it was also the first race she has run in a year. A year that was marked by tragedy with the passing of Whitson's older brother. He unfortunately um, got into drugs and battled with that for four years. He was clean for like three months and then he relapsed and that's when he passed away. But the loss of her brother hasn't stopped Whitson from going all out on the track. She spends her afternoons training and preparing for the state meet, all while keeping Cameron's memory alive. In my mind, I was like, I had to do this for Cameron because this is the first time I had run since he passed away and he also did track, so it was really motivating and I just really pushed myself and dedicated it to him. And so now she's pushing herself to new heights and we challenge each other every day. Her competitive spirit and positive mindset pushes her to be a better athlete. The way she carries herself with a smile every day so you'll never know if this girl has a bad day, you know, and she just, and, and it rubs off. By dedicating the season to Cameron, Whitson is chasing her own dreams while holding her brother near to her heart. In Anthem, Autumn Thompson, Cronkite News. What a great story on Kaylee by our own Autumn Thompson. That's going to do it for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Sedona and Delaney. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.